Hey there, and welcome back to the Parkinson's Disease Education Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about psilocybin, which is something contained in so-called magic mushrooms. You may have heard some buzz about this online recently in regards to Parkinson's disease and treating certain symptoms. I'd like to talk about specifically how psilocybin could affect your symptoms of Parkinson's disease and what current research is showing in this area. It's pretty exciting and I think it's something that's gonna be really interesting to see more studies on down the road. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna roll the intro and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to the Parkinson's Disease Education Show, where we demystify the disease and empower you as the person with Parkinson's disease to reach your true potential. The content contained on this show is for informational purposes only and is not meant to be a replacement for information or advice that you receive from your in-person medical or therapy professionals. If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And for an even more personalized experience, please ask us about our memberships. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. First of all, what is psilocybin? So psilocybin specifically is not a particular mushroom, but rather a psychedelic compound that is found within hundreds of different types of mushrooms. Now, as a general category, a psychedelic is going to be a compound chemically that interacts specifically with the serotonin receptors in the brain. Now, what early research has shown so far is that psilocybin is really promising in terms of not only mood and cognition, but also, surprisingly, with the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. I wanna give you a little bit more detail about that. Before we go into more detail about psilocybin, I wanted to briefly touch on the general characteristics of what a psychedelic drug can do in the brain. So there's some variability about what somebody might experience with a psychedelic because there's various different types of psychedelic, for example, LSD. Generally speaking though, you can have positive, even transformative experiences such as feelings of intense euphoria, uh, even an awe or sense of unity, I guess unity with nature and with other people. On the flip side, you can have some negative feelings too, uh, either more pr provoking more anxiety or maybe an out of body experience that could kind of be scary. Now psilocybin has been used in religious practices for centuries. It's particularly been used in some of the indigenous groups in, uh, in the Americas. So thus far, the main study that we have on this was completed at the University of California, San Francisco, and they had 12 participants that participated in this trial. Now, this wasn't blinded, and it was an open trial, so the individuals knew that they were receiving psilocybin. They received a dose of 10 milligrams that increased up to 25 milligrams. I wanted to share with you the results of that pilot study. So they not only received the two doses of psilocybin, but they also received psychotherapy along with that. What's really interesting is, as I noted before, they had improvements in mood, cognitive abilities, and motor symptoms. What's even more intriguing is those symptoms didn't just last immediately after the dose. They actually lasted weeks post-treatment. Benefits have even been reported of these trial participants to have lasted up to three months. The only side effects noted were some anxiety, nausea, and elevated blood pressure, but no adverse effects were experienced by any of the trial participants, and the symptoms experienced that were negative were mild. What's even more interesting is that even though specifically psilocybin interacts with the serotonin receptors in the brain, it's said to trigger a downstream effect of neuroprotection and even developing new neural pathways. The results of neuroplasticity and neuroprotection are something that they've been able to see in lab results. UCSF is actually doing a bigger trial where they're trying to enroll up to 100 people, and this will be a randomized controlled trial versus an open trial where everybody knows what they're getting. That will increase validity of the results when they compare to a placebo or a control group. What's interesting about the what we mentioned about lab results showing these positive changes is that if that's true, then if you're taking psilocybin or microdosing specifically, you might be able to induce major changes in the brain, specifically motor and non-motor pathways that could affect long-term symptoms of Parkinson's. And that's very intriguing. So it would be very interesting to see what research finds long-term results to be of something like this. So let's talk just for a moment about the legality of taking psilocybin. 
There are limited places in the United States where psilocybin is legal. Microdosing is currently legal in the state of Colorado. I'm not aware of other states, but there could be more. I would look that up for your own state if you're in the U.S. But it is legal in Mexico and Canada. You could potentially travel to those countries for treatment. Or if you're in the United States, try to seek out what the legality is in your specific area. Something else to consider is that psilocybin might interact negatively with some of the medications you're already taking. For example, if you're taking an antidepressant, psilocybin is probably not a very safe thing to do because antidepressants affect serotonin levels and your psilocybin is going to interact specifically with serotonin receptors. In fact, SSRIs and even Parkinson's medications are not considered safe to take alongside things like methylene blue. So it's just something to really be cautious about. I've said this before, but honestly, the people that are looking into things like psilocybin, methylene blue, nicotine, and so forth, are more likely trying to reduce or eliminate their Parkinson's medications, or they aren't taking them yet and they want to avoid taking them in the future. So keep, please keep that in mind. If you're already taking Parkinson's medications, do not try anything without consulting a physician first. Just as a, as a summary of everything we talked about, if psilocybin really can help with reduction of inflammation, helping to protect existing cells from degradation, and help develop new neural pathways, this could be groundbreaking in terms of how we prevent the disease process from progressing and how basically to harness current treatments with all of those benefits in place. Because if you think about it, if you're able to enhance cognition, reduce depression, improve motor function, that's a really a prime time to work on things like intense exercise, to work on psychotherapy, to work on cognition, speech, all those things. And if you've been paying attention to the things we've been talking about on the, on the channel and the podcast recently, you'll know that I've been working closely with Lars Conga, who is up in British Columbia, who's not only helping people with psilocybin, but he's also been helping people specifically with carnivore diet, fasting protocols, as well as exercise routines to induce ketosis and cellular autophagy. The combination of these things makes for a really interesting and potentially an extremely effective treatment regimen. This is especially true if you, you're early in the diagnosis or if you suspect you might have Parkinson's disease. Even if you've been living with Parkinson's for an extended period of time, several years or more, this, this still could be effective as well. So not only is it interesting to see what the research is going to show down the road, the fact that it's being researched is very encouraging to me because something that's a controlled substance in the U.S. being researched for Parkinson's specifically, that could open the doors for multiple states, if not every state in the union, to be open to, to people trying these methods of treatment. If it happened with cannabis, it could probably happen with psilocybin. Speaking of cannabis, let me know if that's a, something you'd like to learn more about. Let me know if you're interested in learning more about medicinal use of, of cannabis. And uh, I'll be happy to present that in a, in a podcast episode. In the meantime, we're going to be talking more about alternative and complementary treatments. As I mentioned, cannabis, we're going to be talking about Ibogaine and others. So please keep the content suggestion coming because there's so much going on right now in this world. And I can't wait to share it with you. Thanks so much for being here. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. As always, be empowered.